Hello and welcome back to Life 4.0. In this video, I will walk you through the important energy monitoring devices for a cruising sailboat. These devices help you keep close tabs on how much power is being generated and how much is being consumed. I'll walk you through the specific devices we've installed on board Sea Rose and have used for several seasons now. I will also explain the installation and wiring of these monitoring tools. If you haven't already watched part one in this series, you might find it helpful to start there before diving into this part two video. Hi, I'm Tom. And I'm Karen. Welcome to Life 4.0, where we share our adventures of life aboard our sailboat as we explore this amazing planet, one anchorage at a time. This is the area of the nav station where I've set up to monitor the various battery banks, to look at what's going on with the alternator, uh, see the health and state of charge of uh, the various banks that we have. So let me walk you through that. Um, at a high level, what we've got here is I've got a, a Victron BMV, it's a battery monitor. Um, this is their 702 model. Um, it's a very popular product that they make. Um, we had a previous version of this in a, in a previous boat and we're very happy with it. So if you get nothing else to manage your power on your boat, you should definitely have a battery monitor. What this does is it uses a shunt. Uh, a shunt is kind of a large metal device and um, it measures the amperage flow across that cable. So it's basically looking at how many amps you're pulling out of your battery bank or how many amps you're pushing back into your battery bank. With that, and knowing the full capacity of your battery bank that you set up when you initially configure it, it can tell you, are you at 90% of your state of charge, are you 80%, are you 100%. Um, it also is a valuable diagnostic tool. You can look um, and know immediately what's going on with your battery bank. Am I drawing down 10 amps of power where I really don't know, I don't hear anything running or like that, or I don't have anything turned on? Um, and you can also um, assess the draw of different devices on your boat. Um, if you're drawing down 10 amps and you all of a sudden turn a refrigerator on and it goes up to minus 15, then you know, okay, that's exactly five amps that refrigerator takes, um, which is all very valuable information. Uh, on the flip side, when the alternator is running, your engine running, you can see exactly what the, uh, or pretty close to what the alternator is putting out. Um, it's going to show you how much uh, amps are going into the house bank. Now that's not the full output of the alternator. The alternator may be, um, as we mentioned before, the digital dual charger, maybe pulling off uh, 10, 20, 30 amps and going into the starter bank. Uh, maybe pulling off some amps to go into the bow thruster bank. But it gives you kind of a sense, uh, you know, pretty close sense. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, the starting battery bank charges up pretty quickly. Our bow thruster bank, we use it a little bit, recharges up in a little bit. The rest of the time we're running the engine, a lot of that amperage from the alternator is going right into the house bank. Anyway, that's the battery monitoring tool from Victron. Uh, 702 has an extra feature where you can monitor the voltage of a second battery bank. So I've set it up to monitor the voltage on the engine's starting battery. Its primary focus is the house bank, but you can also look at the voltage on the starter bank. Uh, they've got models that have Bluetooth connectivity, so you can see that on a phone or an iPad or whatever. Um, this is a, does not have that version, but uh, that's not something we necessarily needed. Again, if you don't <laughs> learn or take away any other message from this whole video, uh, a battery monitoring tool like the BMV from Victron, super, super critical for being able to manage what's going on. Um, so I've got one up here that's, as I mentioned, for the house bank. I also got one down over here um, that I most recently added for the bow thruster bank. So it's monitoring amps in and amps out of the bow thruster bank. Uh, you could argue maybe you'd want a third one because there are three, we have three banks on our boat. Um, the engine starting bank is not as critical, even though it does run the engine. Uh, the drawdown and the replenishment of that is pretty straightforward for a lot of the, the tech on the boat. Um, the bow thruster bank, uh, from time to time, you know, it, since it's also a, a 24 volt bank, I, I really wanted a way to monitor that separately. So I got a second Victron BMV. This is just a BMV 700. Doesn't have a second input to manage voltage from another battery bank. All I needed it was to do was to focus on the bow thruster bank. Uh, so that's down here. Um, so those are the two BMVs. 
Now, this other display up here is another Victron uh, product called their Color Control, uh, Victron Color Control GX, sometimes abbreviated CCGX. Um, frankly, it's, it's a little pricey, but I do feel like it's a good investment in being able to more fully monitor what's going on with your boat. Uh, what this does is, um, at least the way that I've been using it, is it, it integrates with the um, this house BMV. So there's a cable that connects and sends data through what they call VE Direct, which is their kind of proprietary Victron protocol um, over a USB type cable. And it connects into the back of the Victron color control. And it sends all that information over in here. Now this provides a nice graphical view of what's going on. It also takes in the data from all those charge controllers for the solar. Um, so it's sending all that in. And this is where I really use it a lot. I'm able to look at each individual solar panel and see exactly what it's outputting at that moment. Is it 10 watts? Is it 50 watts? Is it 100 watts? What are those um, panels putting out? Obviously, it helps you diagnose if there's a problem with one panel. It also lets you know kind of an idea of the effect of shading on your panels. Um, and, you know, we can see in total as well what our total output is from solar. Now, if you had a Victron device um, that was for an inverter or charger, um, you can interface it with this as well. And you can see, for instance, if you're plugged into shore power, um, how much you're pulling in from shore. Um, if you're running your inverter off of a house battery bank, it's going to display that graphically here so you can see how much you're pulling um, through your inverter. Now, I don't have uh, a Victron branded inverter, uh, but still this is extremely valuable for being able to monitor, uh, again, graphically what's going on. It's got a little animated display, uh, which is really nice to be able to view what's going on. The last thing I'll, I'll just quickly mention here at a high level, what I've got going on here is you might see these three uh, round uh, meters here that are in blue LED. So these are like uh, these are very basic voltmeters that are often used uh, sort of a, an accessory for a car. Um, I bought them online, very cheap, and they uh, plug in and they just read the voltage of the battery bank. So I've got three for each one of my battery banks: house, engine, and valve thruster. Um, now this information is all available in the Victron BMVs. Um, but I just wanted, you know, again, it's a simple, cheap solution. I wanted a quick way when I'm walking around the cabin, um, going by, I want to be able to quickly see how's the voltage on the battery bank rather than having to scroll through a menu. Um, I'll do that at times, but I can give, give me a quick view. They're on all the time. Uh, it's an instant read of what's going on with the voltage, and I can see are there any issues? Is the house bank getting too low uh, for some reason? And um, I like that kind of feature to be able to have a quick reference. So I'm going to show you some details now of the uh, the Victron BMV and color control display, so you can kind of see, um, you know, why you may want to add it to your boat. Okay, so let's dive in a little bit more on these two Victron devices here. So um, on the BMV, uh, there's a setup process when you initially install it to pr primarily to set up your uh, total amp hour capacity of your battery bank. Um, and then once that's set up, then you can view all the data from there and utilize it much easier. So right now, this is set up uh, showing the amps um, into or out of the battery bank. So it's down about minus one amp. That means it's drawing um, about an amp. It's fluctuating a little bit here because I have solar on. But this is showing a minus number is how much it's pulling out of the battery bank and a, a positive number is how much is being pushed in to the battery bank from whatever source. It can be alternator, solar, uh, short power, etc. So you can toggle through the display here. Um, if I go down here it shows that equivalent amount in watts, so minus uh, 60 watts there is the equivalent of the, um, the amp value at about um, 13, amp, 13 volts. Um, this is the amp uh, amp hours that have been pulled down from the battery from 100%. So we are just below 100% and uh, we've used up 45 amp hours of what we have as a 600 amp hour capacity battery bank on the house side. Um, and if we keep going down here, this shows you the equivalent amount of that in percent. So we're about 90, we're 94.7%. So about 95% is the state of charge 
of the battery bank. And this is a number that I watch very closely, uh, making sure that ideally uh, we try to get up to full charge 100% every day. Um, we don't always make it there if there's cloudy days or days we're using more electricity. Um, but that state of charge or percentage is very important. And again, you need to be able to, you need to put in the total battery capacity of your battery bank before it can reliably report that number. Uh, this is the hours. Um, at the current draw um, down from the batteries, this is how many hours um, the battery bank would last for us, so 102 total hours. Now this is assuming drawing the battery bank all the way down. You would never do that really for the health of the battery bank, but it's, it's a reference point. Um, now here's some voltages. A uh, very small number here in the corner says uh, main. And that means that's the main bank that it's monitoring, in this case the house bank. So we've got 12.94 uh, voltage on the battery bank, and you can see that matches uh, the voltmeter up here, 12.9. If I scroll down again, I'm going to get something that says aux in that corner. And uh, aux is that secondary output that's an option with this 702 model. This is the uh, voltage of the engine starting bank, 12.97 uh, volts or basically 13 volts, which is agrees with that voltmeter up there. It's always nice when things agree. <laughs> and uh, this brings us back to the amps. Um, so right now I'm actually putting in two to three amps, up to five, six, seven, eight. Uh, the sun is kind of coming and going right now. Um, sometimes it's behind the clouds, sometimes it, it's, it's coming out, so that's why you see the number fluctuating. But um, you know I'm actually up to 15 amps now, so this uh, sun is coming out quite clearly. And so, love to see a positive number in this. This is, uh, means that we're generating power, putting it into the battery bank uh, without any effort, uh, without any uh, carbon impact the environment, uh, without pulling any power from shore, etc. So, that's a quick rundown of the device. There's a bunch of setups here. Um, you can set up alarms for certain voltage levels and all that. But that's the sort of core functionality of Victron's BMV. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the uh, Victron color control display. Um, as I said, you've got a kind of an animated view here of what's going on with your um, power environment and uh, charging and consumption. Um, they've got a couple different page views here. Um, this is the one I use most often, but they've got um, one here that's a bunch of tiles. I don't really like it as much. There's no animation. Um, and they've also got uh, this thing they call mobile. Um, and uh, so I use this one that's got the little bit of animation to it. So what's going on here? So um, it's showing on the battery, uh, house battery side, uh, the information from the BMB. So as we saw before, we're about 95% state of charge. I know these numbers are really small, but it also shows you some information there, minus 18 watts. Uh, of what's being pulled from the battery. It's uh, 13 volts and uh, about minus one to two amps of draw. Um, and on, on the far right here side it says PV charger. So this is the total watts uh, output of our solar array. Um, we've got uh, about 900 watts of solar. Uh, it's a cloudy day so we're only getting about 170-ish watts uh, coming in. Uh, but you can see that that's animated here showing that that um, charge is going into the battery bank. Now, then there's uh, something being pulled out here that says DC power. So um, basically the difference between what's um, going into from solar uh, over the shunt versus what's coming out of the shunt is uh, the what it calculates as the DC power, meaning these are all the DC loads on the boat. It equates to 190 watts of power that we're consuming. Um, and you would see the same information uh, if you were to look at the BMV. Um, and so that's a, a very important number there to know exactly how much is being drawn from all of the, the devices on the boat. Now, like I mentioned, we don't have the Victron inverter, so, uh, but I do have the inverter on, and so it's all calculated. It's all rolled up into this DC power number. Um, I mentioned I use this for monitoring solar. If I go in, I can view their uh, couple menu options here. And I've named each one of the controllers. So um, our aft bimini panel, the way the one way in the back, 
it's 18, 19 watts right now. Um, next one down is the deck uh, solar panel, 15 watts. You can see a couple of these other um, solar panels, port center, port inner, port outer, about 20 watts. Not a great output, but again, it's because it's a cloudy day today. So I can go down and see all that. Um, and you also might have seen here that there's the two BMV devices. The house BMV is this one. The Balthrust of BMV is the one down below. And it's showing the summary information about that. You can also drill in and see all the detail if you wish. But I use this a lot to kind of assess um, how the solar panels are doing. Um, if I'm getting, of course, getting like zero watts out of a solar panel for the day, I know, hmm, there must be something wrong, a wiring issue or a controller issue or whatnot. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of settings you can do within this as well. Um, and there's a very large community of people that exchange information about how to use Victron equipment as well as the Victron support people on those uh, portals. So um, it's a very beneficial company in my mind to work with. Um, again, you've got various settings here. And um, one of the ones that I use down here is called the VRM online portal. So this takes this information uh, using a Wi-Fi connection. We have Wi-Fi on the boat. It's um, uploading this data on a, on a regular frequency to Victron's portal, and I can go in on uh, a web browser or um, through their mobile app and see what's going on with the boat remotely. And I can see how the charging's going, what the state of charge is of the battery bank and all that good stuff. Um, so that's all set up. So there's a Wi-Fi here that, um, that I've set up connecting to our um, in onboard Wi-Fi environment. So um, very helpful, um, again, to see solar output. If we had any more Victron equipment, you could see the AC input and AC loads, what's going on with the inverter itself from Victron. So I'll show you just a little bit about the installation of it. Uh, obviously, you, you want it in a place that's pretty visible. You can see regularly. Um, and what I did is I mounted this hatch with a number of other devices on it. But um, I cut out a slot here for the color control display and this uh, round hole for the BMV. Um, so you can see it's kind of a, may look like a bit of a rat's nest here. But what's going on on the back of the color control display? I, said, I mentioned there's this uh, VE Direct, which is their proprietary uh, cabling. There's one port there. There's also something called VE Bus. Um, they also have two sort of standard USB ports in here. So they've got two VE Direct ports and two USB ports. Each one of the solar controllers has got its own cable coming in. We've also got a cable from the BMV going into there. Um, I also added a, um, a GPS antenna onto here so that it can monitor the location of the boat. Uh, for instance, if the boat was stolen. Um, or is dragging, I can monitor that. So there's a lot more connections coming in here than those four ports can handle. Uh, what Victron recommends you do is to install a hub. Uh, you can see it, a little hard to see, but there's a little black row of lights. It's a 10 port hub, USB hub. It's gotta be a powered hub. It can't be a passive hub. So I've got that powered from 12 volt from the boat. And um, I've got a whole bunch of cables connected into there um, in the back there. So um, I'm kind of pushing the limit of what Victron recommends for this color control display. I believe that they recommend no more than eight devices connected to it. Uh, I've got, um, I think I've got 11. And so um, every once in a while the uh, device can get kind of glitchy and it'll, it'll reboot on itself. Um, so, um, you know, just to say that if you can minimize your connections into it, great, but I didn't want to like not have all the solar panels showing up in there. It's kind of like, uh, it's not really helpful if it's not showing a complete picture of what's going on with the boat. So anyway, that's kind of the backside um, wiring of that. You can see the wiring I did for those little voltmeters as well here. Okay, that's it. I hope you appreciated the video. I hope it gave you uh, some better appreciation of how charging storage works on a sailboat and uh, maybe give you some encouragement to dig into these systems a little bit more and either do some work yourself or better know how to direct other technicians to do the work on your boat. 
Um, as always, we appreciate your comments and suggestions. If you liked the video, we'd really appreciate if you give us a thumbs up. It helps uh, all those strange YouTube algorithms uh, help other people find this kind of content that they're interested in. And lastly, if you're not already subscribed, I hope you do consider subscribing to Life 4.0, our YouTube channel. Until then, fair winds.